Friends, welcome to the tutorial series on network analysis made simple. During this tutorial, we shall discuss about Milman's theorem. Friends, this theorem is named after Dr. Jacob Milman in the memory of his great service in the area of electrical and electronics engineering. 1911 born Jacob Milman earned his doctorate from MIT in 1935 and served as professor of electrical engineering in California University from 1951 to 1975. He started transferring his knowledge and experience in the form of books from 1941 to 1987. His famous titles such as Electronic Fundamentals and Applications, Microelectronics, Integrated Electronics are considered as the most standard texts even today. Hats off to Dr. Milman for producing such ever-shining texts. Friends, I am extremely happy to dedicate this tutorial to Dr. Milman. Friends, Milman's theorem can be considered to be a combination of Thevenin's and Norton's theorems, but slightly in a different sense. What is the difference? We know that Thevenin's theorem transforms the given network into a single source network of V Thevenin in series with say R Thevenin. Also we know that the Thevenin's theorem can be applied to networks of any connectivity and configuration. But friends, Milner's theorem can be applied to networks of parallel connected sources. So this theorem also is called as parallel generator theorem. But both Milliman's and Thevenin's theorems transform the given network into a single source network. In this sense, both can be considered as the same. So, the Milliman's theorem can be stated as the theorem that transforms the network in which number of sources connected in parallel into a single source network across the load branch. Therefore, to derive the equations for say V equivalent or Vm which I call as the Milliman's voltage and R equivalent or Rm which I call it as a Milliman's resistance, consider the network shown in figure. You find that three voltage sources V1, V2, V3 in series with their Respective resistances R1, R2 and R3 are connected across a load branch RL. We know that the current source connected in parallel can be added algebraically depending on the direction. So, converting each voltage source into current source, we get to the circuit shown in figure. We know that I1 is equal to V1 by R1 i2 is equal to v2 by r2 and i3 is equal to v3 by r3 and i equivalent in this circuit is i1 plus i2 plus i3 as the current source direction is same in all the sources. By substituting we get i equivalent is equal to v1 by r1 plus v2 by r2 plus v3 by r3 and R equivalent is equal to R1 parallel R2 parallel R3. So, 1 upon R equivalent is equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3. Or, G equivalent is equal to G1 plus G2 plus G3 as G is equal to 1 upon R we know. Let G equivalent is equal to summation of GI I goes from 1 to 3 and R equivalent is equal to 1 upon G equivalent. So, using I equivalent and R equivalent, the equivalent circuit drawn is shown in figure. You know that this is nothing but the Norton's equivalent circuit. So, V equivalent is equal to I equivalent to R equivalent or it is equal to I equivalent divided by G equivalent. So, by substituting for I equivalent and G equivalent, we get 
फी ईक्वल अंट इज ईक्वल टू फी वन बै आर वन प्लस फी टू बै आर टू प्लस फी थ्री बै आर थ्री डिवेडेड बै जी वन प्लस जी टू प्लस जी थ्री सो फी ईक्वल अंट इज ईक्वल टू समेन ऑफ फी ई इन टू जी ई ई गोज फ्रॉम वन टू थ्री डिवेडेड बै समेन ऑफ जी ई ई इज ईक्वल टू वन टू थ्री सो In general, we can write the equation for v equivalent or v m as v equivalent is equal to summation of plus or minus v i into g i divided by summation of g i because plus or minus it is because the polarity of the sources may be different. Now we know. R equivalent or Rm is equal to one upon G equivalent or Gm. So using V equivalent and R equivalent, the equivalent circuit drawn is shown in figure. Friends, now you know that using the equation for V equivalent, you can directly convert the given parallel connected sources into an equivalent single source in series with its resistance. Now. We are ready to solve numerical examples. Let's go ahead, friends. Friends, consider the network shown in figure to find current I through 10 ohm resistance using Bellman's theorem. By observing the network, we find that there are three parallel branches across a load resistance of 10 ohm. One branch has a voltage source of 12 volts in series with 6 ohm. Let it be V1 and R1. Another has only a resistance of 12 ohm. Note there is no voltage source in series with it. So let V2 is equal to 0 and R2 is equal to 12 ohm. And the third branch has a voltage source of 16 volts in series with 4 ohm. Let it be V3 and R3. We know that according to Milman's theorem. V equivalent is equal to summation of plus or minus V I G I divided by summation of G I. In this circuit, we can write the equation for V equivalent as V equivalent is equal to V one G one plus V two G two plus V three G three divided by G one plus G two plus G three. No auto V two is equal to zero, and V one and V three are of the same polarity. So. Substituting the values and solving, we get V equivalent is equal to 12 volts. But G equivalent is equal to 1 upon 6 plus 1 upon 12 plus 1 upon 4. By solving, we get G equivalent is equal to 0.5 ohm. So R equivalent is equal to 2 ohm. It is simple. Using V equivalent and R equivalent, the equivalent circuit drawn is shown in figure. Hence, current through 10 ohm resistance I is equal to 12 divided by 2 plus 10, which will give us 1 ampere. Is it not simple, friends? Friends, now let us solve another problem in which two sources supply the common load ZL as shown in figure. It is given that the load ZL is variable in which both resistance and reactance part of the load are varying. We are required to find the value of ZL for maximum power transferred across it, and also we are required to find the maximum power transferred. Not we are required to use Milman's theorem. So we know that V equivalent is equal to V1 Y1 plus V2 Y2 divided by Y1 plus Y2. By substituting the values and solving, we get. V equivalent is equal to 9.72 angle minus 78.56 volts, and Y equivalent is equal to Y1 plus Y2. By substituting the values, we get Y equivalent is equal to 0.22 plus J 0.06. So Z equivalent is equal to one upon Y equivalent. By substituting the values, we get Z equivalent is equal to 4.23 minus J 
सिंस बोथ रेजिस्टेंस एंड रिएक्टेंस पार्ट ऑफ लोड आर वेरिएंग फॉर मैक्सिमम पावर ट्रांसफर जेड एल शुड बी इक्वल टू जेड इक्वल एंड टू कॉन्जुगेट सो वी गेट जेड एल इज इक्वल टू 4.23 प्लस जे 1.15 नोट दैट नाउ यूजिंग वी इक्वल एंड जेड इक्वल एंड एंड जेड एल द इक्वल एंड सर्किट ड्रॉन इज शोन इन फिगर देयर फॉर आई एल इज इक्वल टू वी इक्वल एंड डिवाइडेड बाय जेड इक्वल एंड प्लस जेड एल बाय सब्स्टिट्यूटिंग द वैल्यूज वी गेट आई एल इज इक्वल टू 1.1489 एंगल Minus 78.56 amperes, but we know P max is equal to mod of I L squared into R L. Note that because power is consumed only in resistance part of the load, hence by substituting the values, we get P max is equal to 4.86 watts. Friends. Let us solve another straightforward problem to find V S using Billman's theorem for the circuit shown in figure. It is given that E R is equal to 230 angle zero volts, E Y is equal to 230 angle minus 120 volts, and E B is equal to 230 angle 120 volts. Note that for the instant considered. All sources have the same polarity. So, using V equivalent or V S equal to E R into Y R plus E Y into Y Y plus E B into Y B divided by Y R plus Y Y plus Y B. By substituting the values and solving, we get V S is equal to 168.35 angle minus 60 volts friends next we shall solve another problem to find current il through the load resistance using billman's theorem this also is a straight forward problem but note that the polarity of v1 and v2 are opposite to that of v3 so using v equivalent is equal to summation of plus or minus vi gi divided by summation of gi we get v equivalent is equal to minus v1 g1 minus v2 g2 plus v3 g3 divided by g1 plus g2 plus g3 by substituting the values and solving we get v equivalent is equal to 4 divided by 3 volts But G equivalent is equal to G1 plus G2 plus G3 by solving and substituting the values, we get G equivalent is equal to 3 divided by 4 mo. So R equivalent is equal to 4 by 3 ohm. Using V equivalent and R equivalent, the equivalent circuit drawn across the load branch is as shown in figure. From the figure, we find that I L is equal to V equivalent divided by R equivalent plus R L. By substituting the values, we get I L is equal to two divided by seventeen amperes. Friends, we shall solve yet another problem to find E naught using Billman's theorem for the circuit shown in figure. Note that. 48 volts and 60 volts sources polarity is same whereas the polarity of 20 volts source is in opposite direction and v2 is equal to 0 so using e not is equal to summation of plus or minus vi gi divided by summation of gi and we get e not is equal to V1 G1 plus V2 G2 plus V3 G3 minus V4 G4 divided by G1 plus G2 plus G3 plus G4. By substituting and solving, we get E naught is equal to 9 volts. Friends, next we shall discuss about the limitations and applications of Milman's theorem. The very first limitation is that. This theorem is applicable only if sources are connected in parallel. If only 
parallel connected sources are not present we may have to modify the network and bring it to the form required next you may note that both parallel connected voltage and current sources could be present in the network as far as the applications of milbus theorem is concerned this theorem will be very useful to obtain the equivalent single source when a number of sources are connected in parallel this theorem also permits finding the current through or voltage across rl without having to apply a method such as mesh current analysis or nodal analysis or superposition theorem and so on friends during the next discussion let us solve the question of ias mainstream of electrical engineering wherein i will explain about how to modify the given network to apply milmans theorem friends now let us solve one unusual network to find current in 10 ohm resistance using milmans theorem note it carries 20 marks by observing the network we find that there are only two voltage sources in parallel one of 24 volts in series with 2 ohm and the other of 20 volts in series with 2 ohm the remaining circuit to the right of ab is such that we cannot apply milmans theorem directly note that so first we can find the equivalent circuit for the circuit to the left of ab using milmans theorem consider the circuit to the left of ab as shown in figure using milmans theorem vm is equal to summation of plus or minus vi gi divided by summation of gi or vm is equal to v1 g1 plus v2 g2 divided by g1 plus g2 by substituting the values we get vm is equal to 22 volts and gm is equal to g1 plus g2 by substituting the values we get gm is equal to 1 mo so rm also is equal to 1 ohm using vm and rm the modified circuit is shown in figure by reducing the network we get the circuit in which we find two parallel branches one of 22 volts in series with 3 ohm and the other of 9 ohm only so by applying milmans theorem again to the circuit to the left of cd we get v equivalent is equal to vm into gm1 plus v4 g4 divided by gm1 plus g4 not v4 is equal to 0 so by substituting the values we get v equivalent is equal to 33 divided by 2 volts and g equivalent is equal to 4 divided by 9 mo and hence r equivalent is equal to 9 by 4 ohm that is simple so using v equivalent and r equivalent the network can be reduced as shown in figure from the equivalent circuit current through 10 ohm resistance il is equal to v equivalent divided by r equivalent plus r5 plus rl by substituting the values we get il is equal to 1.245 amperes so friends note that in this problem we have used milmans theorem as far as possible till the last step friends i hope you have understood the concept of milmans theorem its limitations and its applications different numerical examples are solved to bring out the required skills of reducing the network to bring it in the proper form to apply milmans theorem i hope this tutorial has ignited some of your thoughts if so please forward your feedback and suggestions to my email 
Thank you for watching this video.